welcome to episode 25 of your girl's favorite podcast, The Young and the Wash. I am Fat Face Fabio, a.k.a. Sucio Sweatband, his goddamn self, Zoo Shiesty, and with me as always... Of course, it's your favorite light skin as you hear the rambling before. I feel some type of way about the word crackers. <laughs> I brought it back to the high school days with the fresh pimp, so, you know, it is what it is. And of course, we got our man behind the scenes here, the man JP, Walk On Wizard, South Bay Savant, it all. Thank you, boys. Uh, I appreciate it. It's good hey, to be back. Hey, hey, look here, look here. Oh, gee. I've, I've heard a lot of rumblings out here. A lot of you niggas wasn't making pods, and a lot of you niggas pods stopped. <laughs> we had to do some shit. We back on the fi- we back out here, both feet planted. I don't want to hear none of this shit no more. A lot of you niggas, no, it's not happening. It's n- you're not coming up. There's no come up. <laughs> we're not gonna take it. Yeah. All right. We're not gonna stand for that. Hey, hey, hey. Let me, hey. Do, let me do the pregame talks. Let me do the pregame talks. I rattled up. You're getting a lot. Of, you're, you're giving me a your head better fired him up, bro. You're giving me a lot of Jameis Winston vibes. I need you to tone it back. All right. Tone it back. Breathing. Okay. All right. All right let's go to quick hitters. With that being said. <laughs> All right. NFL draft was this week. Fire. What are we going to remember most about this year's draft? I don't know. Kyle Pitts. Oh, Kyle no, Pitt. no, it's going to be Kyle lies. Pitts. You know we're going to remember? The Bengals made the conscious decision to let Joe Burrow get murdered for at least one more year. I'm with you on that. Yeah, Jamar Chase, he's, he's nice. Well, he's nice had, as fuck. They had two thousand yard receivers already. T. Higgins and Boyd had a thousand yards. They drafted T. Higgins last year, didn't yeah, they? Like, like, yeah. Like, here's my thing. I get it. He's probably better than both of them. But you probably. know, what's, like, I saw a meme and it was funny. It's like, you know, what we're gonna hear a lot of next year. Joe Burrow drops back, looks for jo- sack. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Burrow drops back, looks for Tyler sack. Like, yeah, yeah like, he has nobody. Well, all the weapons don't matter if you have 0.5 seconds. Like, this ain't seven on seven. This is real. There's life. a lot of regroupings in this draft. With the whole Waddle to Tua, you know, um, Smith to Hurts, Smith to Hurts, ETN stuff like to Lawrence. That. Dude, that shit was so cool. I think the Jag. I think I do think the Jags didn't need that running back. Like. Not thought, that high, at least. I thought that yeah. was super dumb, that, that high, especially too, because I had their, I had that undrafted guy, uh, Robinson from last year. Rob, uh, oh, Rob, Jerome Robinson, dude, he killed it last year, dude. So like, I don't know if they're trying to get like combo back that up or something like that, but you didn't have to, you didn't have to. They draft had more that. holes they could have addressed. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I don't like know, draft the defense, yeah. like their whole defense, or even sure up the offensive line to protect your future guy here. Like I don't Jesus, know, is their O line bad? It's, it's not, not bad, good. but it's not good. Because yeah, I mean, he rushed for good. DJ Shark had a decent year before. But that's because they're like, always playing from behind. I mean, like, you know, like. That's true. But I don't remember Gardner Minshew getting killed last year like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he also can move It's a, a very bit. average to below average yeah. offensive line. Yeah, it could yeah. have been improved. Though. Yeah. yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Okay. Most <laughs> <who's> facts. <laughs> which person is most responsible for the person you are today? Hmm. <laughs> I guess, like, the cliche is your parents. Like, I mean, it is. Yeah, definitely it is your but parents. But out of each one of them, which one's more responsible for who you are? I think I'm very much like both. Like, yeah. all the annoying ass But for me, it's my stepfather, who I consider my father, you know, obviously. But, yeah, it's mom. Mom, I have the, I'm the soft like my mom in a sense of that, like, she's just, she thinks about other people and kind of puts other people before herself. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I do get a lot of that in a sense. Uh, but then I always get, like, um... Uh, my, you know, my stepfather, he always, uh, he, he taught me a lot about like discipline and just, you know, respecting, being respectful and stuff like that. So yeah, overall, overall you say your mom. stepfather. But I'd say overall mom, but it's like I said, it's a good combination. Okay. Good combination. I like that. What's the best movie you've ever seen in theater? In theater? In theater? Fuck. <laughs> Not Evan Almighty. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible movie. Um, we rioted that night. Oh, you know what was really good in theaters? Oh, well, I was. No, I didn't see that in theater. Great, one of my favorite movies. My favorite movie, favorite. Favorite. You know, I saw, and I'll say this, I was on some uh, PEDs at the time, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I saw the second part of the Hobbit movie, like the second. Which one? The last uh, one. Schmaug or the, uh, the last Battle one. of the Five Armies? Whatever, whatever is the last one. I watched it like Battle four the five times in theaters. Fire. Baked out of my mind each time. But you know what was really <laughs> good in theaters? And like, I didn't appreciate it until I saw it at home later, like years. I fucked with Interstellar heavy. Dude, yes. I've still never heavy. seen that. I've never seen that movie. It, bro, that tool that Was that with you? No, I think I was with the like Gomez and all them. I was going with Gomez, but like, bro, like I remember watching that and being like, "What?" And then when I got home and like a couple of years later, I rewatched it and I like I've kind of I knew what was going to happen, so it made more sense. Yeah. I was like, Dude, I'm even more mind fucked because like I thought I saw some shit, and then, then when I got home and I it was like, you know what it was like? It was like re-listening to Little Wayne verse, and you missed everything, but you already fucked with the verse. Yeah. But there's like four bars, you're like, what? I missed this. That's why I felt about Interstellar. Like I was like, damn, I like this at the movies, and then I saw it at home, and I was like, damn, I've never seen that movie, but I've heard it's great. It, it no, is it's a good movie. Good, great. bro. Yeah. For me, I, I'm going two here. One of them, uh, Zo will probably feel some type of way because I don't think you either didn't go or you were locked out of it or something. I don't know. But the step up. 
or was it Step Up or no? Uh, Stomp the Yard. I saw Stomp the Yard in, in theaters. <laughs> yeah, fuck you guys for that. I yeah. still remember that. Yeah, Stomp the Yard in theaters was fire. And then uh, the one that I really will go with is Django. I love Django. I, and too. I saw that shit in theaters and holy shit. Like, it was so good. Like, especially uh, Leonardo DiCaprio or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. When when he comes into the movie, you're like, fuck, game changer. Like, you know, it gets really good at that point. I'll pay $500 for you niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I need five fights. I need five <laughs> fights. <laughs> That's just crazy. Who do you think will win MVP of the NBA? I I don't I I I don't want it to be this person, but it's gonna be this person, and it's gonna be the center from Denver. Jokic. Yeah, it's gonna be Jokic. I did say at the beginning of this year it's gonna be an itch. One of the itches. You did say win. that, but I'm gonna say this, and this goes to a question. I think you asked this as a quick hitter. Me and Travis talked about it. The MVP uh, voting. Yeah, I believe that. I don't believe it should happen after playoffs. I believe it should happen after the first round of playoffs, though, because I'm going to stand for this. And I'm not a huge fan of him, but this is wild. Steph Curry might actually be playing the best basketball of his whole career I right now. I think it's a fact. If he gets out the first, like, if he gets past the play-in and then somehow gets out the first round, I mean, he is the most valuable yeah, person facts. to his team and is on a historic run. It's like, no, before it's like, oh, if you're lower than the four seed, you can't be MVP. I believe this. He's making an MVP run because he was able to get his team that should be nowhere near the playoffs. Yeah, one hundred percent. Bro, he came off like what did he do? He fell on his ass and he like. But I feel like that's off. a whole. He came back. I don't know what they did with that boy's butt, but he came back shooting lights out. Bro. But that's the whole LeBron thing, though. You know, that's the same. That's the whole argument. That argument is the same one for LeBron, which I fully, fully understand. I, I'm not gonna lie. I think but this like Warriors if, team is no, a they're, lot they're more trash. Dog shit they than are, a lot but of if you took, teams. but if you took LeBron off of half the teams that he was on, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they're they're not making playoffs. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like, that's just. But that's how I think MV. That's how I think MVPs should be, though. Okay, then why are you upset that Jokic is gonna win MVP? Oh, I mean, because uh, I think Steph Curry, because I. I think Steph Curry is the most valuable player to his team. If you take Steph Curry, his arg I'm agreeing with his yeah. argument. If you take Steph Curry off of the Warriors, the Warriors are fucking trash. They're the the Nuggets aren't very good without Jokic. I mean, they're going to be better than no, the Warriors. I'll, I'll say so. Would they? Yes, yes they have 100%. All, they have all-stars on. Oh, I mean, oh, they have all-stars. Like, like, keep my hands hurt now, though, but Jamal Murray. Was Jamal Murray an all-star? I think he's a one-time all I could be wrong. Uh, Maybe he's not all-star. never been an all-star But that nigga nice. Proven, proven score. Let me say that. Maybe a proven score. You got Aaron Gordon. Or Aaron Gordon, who's... Aaron Gordon's not that great. Porter Jr.? Porter Jr.'s nice. He's Will inconsistent. Barton, that team is... Dude, you're naming Will Barton. Like, come on, bro. Will Barton's nice. He's not, I'm not saying he's not nice, but he's not that good. Okay, okay but here's my He's team. a good role player. He's a yeah. good role player. You'd rather have him on your team than not have who's him on your team. Who's better, Kelly Oubre or Will Barton? Exactly. Right now, probably Barton. Probably Barton. Nah, I'm, there's Kelly no Oubre the Josh, bum. you got to... All right, I'm going to say this. In the defense, you got to stop sucking niggas like name dick instead of seeing their Kelly Oubre is better than Will Barton. You're wild. Yeah, he, nah, dude, he's true. trash. Bro, Kelly Oubre got sent to the bench because he was Yeah, dog bro, he's play, he was supposed to do good this year. He's playing bro, like, he's a bum. Stop, stop he, looking Will at Bar the ads. Stop looking at his hair. Stop looking at the, nah, the look bitches. at the numbers. No, it's not numbers. You have to watch these niggas play basketball. Yeah, Kelly Will Barton is not good. I don't care who your girl's favorite player is. Bro, you know Barton, saying, bro, like, Will Barton is, Will Barton bro, is not that good. All right, I got a question. If Kelly Oubre is so good, why has every team he's been on shipped him out the second they can ship him out? He got double shipped out of OKC. They traded for him in the Chris Paul trade and sent his ass for a second base. Will Barton's okay. averaging 13 points a game. How much is Kelly Oubre averaging? How many minutes is he playing? Probably 19. 31. Okay, what's Kelly Oubre averaging? All right, I'll look it up right now. And keep in mind, he also got sat in about eight games for not being a real nigga. 16 points a game. On a dog How shit team. He, 13 points per, like, contributing Same to amount of wins. Minutes. Huh? Same amount of minutes. How many shots okay, are taking? But here's the thing. 13 points contributing to a win yeah. means more than 16 points to when the your L's. team is yeah. dog shit. Bro, okay, I have a question then. Is um is Malik Beasley better than Kelly Oubre? No. Malik Beasley's averaging 20 points for the Timberwolves right now. Yeah, well, but he's, not, nice. he's not available. That nigga's nice. Okay, but here's my thing though. Is his 20 points the same as Karis LeVert when he was on the Nets and they made a oh, run? Oh, LeVert was nice. And he was barely averaging 20 points. I wouldn't say – I don't believe Malik Beasley's better than that. You know why? Because I'd rather have 16 in a win than 25 yeah. and nothing but else. No, Kelly Oubre That's is – That's like saying no, Mason Plumlee's better because he's on Detroit and he get, he just gets the ball all the time. Yeah, let, let's put, let's just put it this way. Kelly Oubre is underperforming on he the He is Warriors. underperforming. Okay, but so I, I, know, know, but I still think he's better than Will Barton. his whole career. In Washington, bro, they shipped him out for Otto Porter Jr. God, low-key. That's fine. And that guy, yeah, I don't know. The Suns made him do a cowboy ad and then shipped him to yeah. OKC. Yeah, <laughs> very true. And then OKC didn't even let this nigga get off the plane. They shipped him to uh, Golden State. Yeah. And then Draymond Green told that nigga in the locker room. There's a lot room, of hype. Yeah, there's a lot of Draymond hype. Draymond Green had, and they're not saying it's Draymond, but look, we all know it's Draymond. This man had a problem with coming off the bench. Draymond Green looked at him and said, bro, we had Andre Iguodala come off the bench. Who the fuck are you? Yeah, He's facts. like, what are we talking about right now? Can we get the next question? <laughs> in the words of Josh Valley, next question. <laughs> How many kids do you want? Three. Why Tom. three? 
Now two. I used to want three. Because I, I want to see the dynamic of who they choose to gang up on. <laughs> like, I want to see who's the odd man out. Because out of my siblings, I'm definitely the odd man out. Like, my little brother and my older one get along way better together than I get along with either one of them. Mm-hmm. So I want to I want to see who's got the back against the wall mentality. That kid's usually a little bit more different. You know, what about you? Why two? I want. I used to want three. Want two because I realized what it takes to have kids as I get older. As we learned from <laughs> eating at Red Lobster last night, I was like, "Oh, this was cheap." And I was like, "Damn, but if I multiply this by five hey, we times, literally did that. I was like, "Bro, that, we, we were like, oh, this didn't hit our wallets that bad." It's like, no, it was good stuff, like whatever. And I'm like, but imagine having to do this for one, two, you know, two children, a wife, and yourself. I'm like, even if you go to Chili's, that's a ninety dollar check, easy. I'm like, no. I can't do this on the on, the, on, the, on a weekly Apple basis. Applebee's has rats. <laughs> exactly. Like, I can't do it. <laughs> if you could live in a different era, would you? Nah, because I'm not going to lie. It's crazy as it is for black people right now. <laughs> it was crazier in another crazy. time. <laughs> in, in the words of the Indian dude off Barbershop 3, I, and I do believe this, it's never been a better time to be a black man in America yeah. than right now. It's facts. If you fuck with me, I get to expose you. White people are living in fear and guilt. <laughs> and though, for the most part, everyone else is coming together for the most part. So I'm going to go with this. Now, don't get me wrong. If equality wasn't a factor, I'd be out here boogieing my ass off in the 80s. That'd be Yeah, no dead ass. That's the thing. If, yeah, if, I if, buck- ra- if, 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 like, if, not to cut you no, off, no, though. No. Yeah, if, if, if um, you know, racism wasn't a thing or if I could, like, oh, Travis, like, we're all white men and we're all equal here. Like, you know, like, where would you go? Shit, I'd go to, like, the 20s or something like that. Like, right before the Depression, like, fuck yeah. Like, I like you can get away with anything back in the day. Like, things were just different. Like, you know, like, like in the 70s, you can get back with, like, anything. Yeah, you could. I mean, you saw what that was. Well, I'm trying to go to an era where they have drugs and unprotected sex <laughs> it's like a different country and right, 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 yeah right now if you could live uh no just that are you against the nfl number change or, or are you with it uh, i'm against the way nike's going about it like making the players have to buy their inventory yeah it sucks. i kind of like it honestly. people are mad but people forget that when lebron and ad when ad came to la switch. they yeah. wanted to switch they and, waited a whole year but, though but to like do it. but nike told lebron the same thing which i thought was crazy to tell lebron james but then I also thought about the inventory LeBron James probably has in that Nike factory. And he's yeah. And they're like, my nigga, there's like $4.6 million worth of jerseys. You don't have to like, you got to get rid of these, bro. Like, yeah. you might not want to pay it, but we ain't just going to take a $4.6 million L or I like, whatever it was. I like the number change. Uh, I do. I, I like the number change and giving the option to like wear whatever number you really want. But I do understand from a, a scheme wise that it's a little bit, it will be a little bit harder. Yeah, Tom for, Brady like, hated it. He can suck it up, bro. He's going to be fine. But like, it's not going to be that big of a deal. I mean, okay. if you couldn't do it before, I mean. I kind of like some of the new numbers. Like Kyle Pitts wearing number eight. I think it's really cool. Yeah, that'd be sick. Or Jamar Chase wearing number one. I feel like yeah. it should be the rules of like. Peterson uh, went back to seven yeah. in Minnesota. Like that was so sick. Like they can bring over like the LSU seven. Like it can be a thing. Like now it can be a thing in the NFL. Like that's so sick. I love that. I like, I, yeah, it's, it's got more of a high school vibe. It has some fun to it. Like there's nothing. But I do want yeah, I'm with you. I do understand the Tom Brady. Like, bro, if I look up and number four is the middle linebacker. Like it just throws off. Like you're yeah. saying, like and now you're yelling single digits, and niggas don't know who. Yeah, I get yeah. That. If you were blind, who would you trust to dress you? I don't know. Fuck. You know why this is a loaded question? Because if I was blind, I wouldn't know who dressed well to begin with. So how would I? know? No, you went blind today. Oh, I went blind. Okay, because you said if you were blind, I'm like, I don't yeah. know, bro. Uh, hmm. That's a good question. I was going to say one of my homegirls, but then I was thinking about last pod when we talked about women just letting niggas walk around outside looking fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, I let Delgado. I let Delgado dress me. Yeah, I let Chino dress yeah, me. I, yeah, I let Delgado so dress shout, me. Shout out to Chino. He knows. Even yeah. though that man was looking straight Puerto Rican the other day, blending in with the wooden table type shit. But you know. He had a blade in his, underneath his lip. <laughs> but you would, trust a girl, you would trust a girl to dress you? Like dong, I could. Like dong out and everything? I, I, yeah, because my thing is like this. Like You got to think about when you make it, your stylist usually isn't a dude. Like it's yeah. a girl So you have to have like a tra- And it's like this Like she's dressed Like I'll say this There's two things on the internet That I love that are funny When like women dress their kids And they look like adults And they said stop dressing them Like the niggas who left you <laughs> But I also feel like Women dress you like niggas They wanna <laughs> <laughs> That's so good <laughs> Like um I do believe For the most For most women Don't hold me to this They dress you Like Niggas they wanna fuck or yeah. nigga, they like they're dressing you like so. They, you know what I mean? Like they're lead, they're trying to lead you in the right direction. You know what I mean? I would trust my girl after seeing after my girl sees how I dress now. I would trust her to dress me. The things that she's gotten me, uh, like uh, long sleeves and jackets and stuff like that, have all been like stuff that I'm like, that's good stuff. Yeah, I don't think it'd be that hard. I feel yeah, like I really wouldn't. I just wear I just wear jeans, cargo pants, and long sleeve t-shirt. Yeah. That's all I wear. Real, and, like real. something on my head. Uh, all right, and we haven't been back for a while, so we want to do something a little nostalgic. Let you guys let the people know what time it's on. 
So uh, we have some funny topics. We are going to get into the draft at some point. But uh, Josh and me and Trevor are talking off mic. And we have a very uh, – just like an idea we want to throw out there. What is your favorite – Spongebob episode Or maybe like Yeah Yeah Spongebob, Spongebob, yeah, SpongeBob And we can maybe go into Something else about that Yeah yeah uh, For me it's definitely The pizza episode The Krusty Krab pizza, pizza? The Krusty Krab pizza no, like, You funny. and me <laughs> The Krusty Krab <laughs> Yeah Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro, That's literally that's One of the, the funniest shit Krusty Krab I love the I love that part too because he really gets on a rock. He's like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this goes off like what? Like, that's when, just crazy. When I was seven, eight, maybe I was eight. I might have yes, like between seven and nine. My mom made my birthday cake for the first time. My uh, oh, sh- uh, name drop. Steven Strasberg's mom used to make my cakes when I was little. She was my dad's uh, boss, and she made a couple of my birthday cakes. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I picked that name off the floor. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, the first time my mom did this, I'm on the fence about it. I'm like, you ain't never made me a cake before. She made me a SpongeBob cake, and the teeth were airheads, and like his belt and shit was like a bunch of airheads that she cut up with. Like, yeah, it was fucking dope. That's but effort. I, no, it's effort, dude. I was I was ecstatic. I flexed on all my friends when I got to school. I was like, remember my cake? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, bitch. Yeah. You know what? I, you know what I just realized too about your favorite episode. Too, there was a real nigga moment in that episode too because he delivers the pizza and the guy's like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Like, and then, and then, and where's then, the soda? Exactly, and, and fucking, exactly, and fucking Squidward comes in for his homie, like, "Bitch, you gonna take the soda? You gonna take? You gonna take it and love it?" Another one. Look, I told your little friend I ain't paying for that. Wow, this one's on the. One of the few times Squidward stands up for SpongeBob. Dude, and ever, I love it. I love, love it. it, bro. That's a real I, moment I right there. I think my two favorites because I think I want to say like I had to sing this in front of my class one time for like some stupid project. The F is, uh, the yeah. F U N song is really good. I sing it. <laughs> F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. And it is for anyone. I'm down here. No, but I like the down plank- here in the deep. I like the plankton. I like the plankton remake. F is for fire. U <laughs> <laughs> is for uranium. <laughs> Bomb is <laughs> <It's> for <laughs> no survive, <laughs> and then he cuts that shit so great, <laughs> bro. That one's good anytime they go jellyfishing. But you know which one's always hilarious to me? The hook, I love the hook <laughs> episode, <laughs> yeah. bro. Bro, that that's hooking. lust, bro. That shows like that's like teaches you about lust. Like mm-hmm. things are fun. It's like ooh, it's fun, and it's like it's like no, like bro, oh, that's just so funny. Anytime one's almost died, it's good. Like the hook episode, the one where he's trying to flex on Sandy, like that nigga don't need water and he almost <laughs> fucking died. Oh, what about the blow up arms? Well, the blow up arms is a great one too. Oh, that shit's ripped hilarious. my pants and then I. Oh, ripped rip my, my pants, pants is so good. All just because I ripped my pants. When Big Larry came around. Nah, but you know what's my one, bro? And this shit's so stupid. But I recently watched it stoned and it, it held up. Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. Oh yeah, that's, that's chocolate. <laughs> I remember when uh, they invented chocolate. I, lo- I love, I hated the, it. I love the episode too when he, uh, when Squidward acts like he doesn't like the Krabby Patties when he yeah. when he tries to get him to eat one and then he goes into the vault. Comes out the so- vault built like me, dude. That shit is so great. It goes straight to your thighs. No, you know what was also top five. This is so corny that we're doing. It's not corny, but this is funny. When Squid- uh, when Squidward uh, moves into the like the squid suburbs. Oh, and that's like, a great, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that, a great you know, one. that made you learn that, like, as weird as this is, to, like, make it, like, a little bit more deep. It made you realize, like, like the idea of segregation is cool. Like, being around, like, only your people. Until you realize what other people have to offer, then you realize, like, it's really not that cool to only be around just your people. Yeah, like, like yeah. yeah, like, when he saw that, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then when I got older, I was like, oh, oh there was a message here. Like, What about the jellyfish one? Because there's two that I think that, like, really the least amount of words of any SpongeBob episodes, <laughs> which is, like, the jellyfish one with, like, the with the techno. The other one is the... um. The one when they make all the Krabby Patties for the sardines, and he's just whipping those things out. Bro, is that the first original SpongeBob I think, episode? I think, I think it is. I think one. it is. That that's fire. That's, no, that's that one's good. Pretty Patties? Oh, yeah, he knows how to be dying. 
when uh, Patrick and Spongebob had bad breath at the movies. But they're uh, like, we're not ugly. We just had bad breath. He's like, you gave me the ugly. Or what about the one when they try to get Mr. Crab to feel young again so they go panty rating? They just took that one off. No way. Yeah. It's, it's kind of sushi all over. I mean, it is, but yeah. come on. Like, that's yeah, it's just hilarious. Great... Like... Panty rating? No. <laughs> you know what's, what's disgusting? When this nigga paints uh, Mr. Crab's whole house with spit. Yeah. Oh, that my God. so gross, And, and the spit's going, he's like... Poof, poof, poof. Like, he gets the bubble, pops it, and it's just like pew. And it's everyone misses everything. And that, like literally, when I watch it, I was like, you know, like the saliva you get, like when your mouth starts to sweat before you throw up. Yeah. I watch that, and my mouth does. I, I've never been able to watch that episode all the way through because I'm just like, dude, this is fucking gross right now. Yeah, that shit's awesome, bro. Well, there's a, yeah. There's what about the one we talk about all the time, Which where you go into that different like go down, and it's like. Pfft. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. That's a good one. Or like the, the chocolate, the chocolate in the thing and the bus is moving. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he like touches the chocolate and the, and like the, the engine roofs. Like, 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 that's so funny. Oh, God. Good stuff. Uh, that was, that was awesome. Shout out to Weenie Hut Jr. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a great one. Oh, what do you call it? It was that being said. Weenie. Yeah. Super Weenie. Tra- Travis, Travis had something he wanted to bring to So the I wrote down, too. obviously, I saw on Twitter, you know, that, you know, everyone, I don't know if everyone saw it, but. T Pain realized that you can have DMs and people request to send you a message, you know. So you actually have to go and click the request. It's not just gonna pop up in the feed, you know. Mm-hmm. And so someone tweeted like this whole time, like T Pain's been saying, like, oh, the industry hates him, like nobody fucks with him. Man figures out that he can has DMs. Oh, it's the man oh! with the legend. Sun's out, guns out. Oh, oh wow. Why are you like Mark Wahlberg in painting game right now, bro? <laughs> Should we get him on? Yeah, let's get him on. Let's yeah, get him let's on. Get him let's get him. Hey. Fucking Hoyts. <laughs> Fucking Hoyts. We got young Hoyts in the building right oh, here. Come on, come on. Come on. Hey, fresh cut? Hey, you know, hey whoa. Little, what's, little, hey, little, hey, that's fresh. Yeah. What hey, the fuck? Make sure we're both in the, in the shot right there. Wow, it's perfect timing. Too. Oh. Like, we'll, we'll share a mic. We'll share a mic. We'll share a mic. He looks good. We're both in there? <laughs> yeah, he looks good. All right. All right. So, all right. Start over. Show, tell him what, what time it yeah, is. Yeah. Let him know. All right, so... So what we're doing right here, you know, my, my segment I found out over the weekend, or not over the weekend, but over the week, T-Pain. I don't know if you heard about it, Tootie. Did you see that T-Pain found out what request messages are, or the request DMs, that there's a whole section that, like, you have your DMs, and then people can send you a DM, but they're not, like, your friend, or they don't follow you, whatever, so it's in the request. So you hit request, you see it. Yeah. Well, this whole time, you know, T-Pain thinks that nobody fucks with them, the industry doesn't fuck with them. He looks at his request and has, like, over 200, like, celebrities, big-name people that are, like, trying to reach That's out to him, like, wild name like yo. Cause then, and then he puts up a video, like, two days ago or yesterday, and he, like, met up, finally met up with Jamie Foxx. And, like, you know, like, Jamie Foxx, like, bro, we finally got to get together, like, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, like, you finally checked your shit, dumbass. Like, you know, like, fuck, like, important people trying to get to you. You know, like, legend. (laughs) You know? So it's just, like, thoughts on that. Like, you know, thoughts on the fact that he didn't know. I mean, fuck, dude. You would have thought, like, (laughs) today's, like, the way everything is today. You're like, dog, like, my man should know that. You know? (laughs) I'm like, dog, how do you not, like, come on, dog, like. I know you know technology. You can't be big, big pimping it like that all the time. Yeah, look at this thing. Okay. No, because I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Some of the people on here. ESPN, Barstool Sports. Fire. Uh, let's see who's no else. Free shout outs. <laughs> no free shout outs. No free shout outs. No free shout outs. <laughs> Fergie. Fergie. <laughs> like, bro, Kawhi. I know you guys don't know who Kawhi is, but she's cool. Like, dude, like, why being uh, like, look why at being his no face. Mirror? And if you see the video, if you look at his face, it's like, just like, Viola fuck. Davis. Like, <laughs> No, well, people been people been trying to reach you. People want to hear blaming on like you know blaming. But like, like, you know what's funny? I saw T Pain in 2012. He was on tour with Chris Brown. Amazing show. Like, oh yeah, I, I did bet- see it. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. That was with uh, Omarion too, right? Yeah, Omarion. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. I was there. Yeah, amazing show. But remember when T Pain comes out and he's like, "Yo, the industry don't fuck with me. I'm doing this whole set auto- without auto tune. You niggas don't think I can sing? Talking crazy cash money moolah shit. I like that energy personally. But then I was thinking, I was like. Damn, that was ten years ago. Uh, Carry the one. I was like, damn, this nigga been angry. This nigga been angry. <laughs> Carry. This nigga been angry. That's math, math twelve for you. Yeah, there you go. No, no, no. <laughs> Y'all didn't even let me get to the joke. I was about to be like, this nigga's been angry for about thirty five hundred days <laughs> for uh, no reason. Like, nigga, you had Viola Davis in your DMs. Bro, how do you not know how Instagram works at this point in time? Like, but I that's also crazy. You know, you know the difference is though that tells you that T Pain's actually in charge of his accounts, or he wasn't used to bitches sliding into his DMs. Like, like I, you, I, you, no, uh, no. No, no, I, no, I give T-Pain, no, I believe because T Pain's one of those dudes. He's uh, actively said he's in like a, a documentary. Him, his wife likes chicks. 
So she'll grab extra girls. She'll like she's in charge of who gets brought in. So but she, <laughs> yeah, he's living his best life. Josh is like, I'm I like, need this. You're gonna do that right next to the microphone. <laughs> Pause. Wow, his mm-hmm. wife's into chicks. How does that work? Like she just put it out there. Like, no, everybody, know, like everybody knows like that. Like, he talks about it. Yeah, like, he has a whole thing. Like, like yeah, we like girls. Like, it's not My man's thing. getting threesome requests in his DMs and is not seeing it. I'm not. That's I disgusting. Ne- Hold on. Let me, let me finish what I was saying. Never said this man's getting threesome requests. I'm not. Like. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> hey, Josh, I'm going to teach you media tool. You don't say things that involve people's marriages, my nigga. That's how niggas get shot frequently. Well, apparently his wife's open about No, 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 no. Okay, but... I'm getting to the point I was going to make. The point was, you, you cut off half the point. Put your boners away. Look here. N- niggas, who, niggas who can go get pussy in other avenues and are famous. You got to think about when T-Pain was famous, he's part of like the grab a bitch on tour, me and my wife going to dig you out type of age. T-Pain's not a DM slider. He don't come from that class of nigga because he's one married still and two, his wife has to approve. This nigga don't know how to use his phone. Class, like, of, class of nigga. I like you, that. you get what I'm saying? Like, he, like he's from like the... Oh, they all line up in front of the tour bus and she picks. He's not on fucking IG like losing his shit over Summer Ray. So no, he don't know where the request Fire. button is because it's just yes. like that's not an you, excuse. That's not an no, excuse. No, I think that's a valid no, excuse. No, you should know how this works by yeah. now. Bro, you're 27. You know when Instagram came out, we were a senior in high school. T Pain had 14 number one singles by then. That nigga don't give a fuck. <laughs> No, he's picking, but what I'm saying is this, though. No, you're missing my point here. He might be picking, and talking to Mike, by the way, but he might be picking, oh, yeah. but the thing what I'm saying is he don't got to go look for them on the internet. Like, oh, no, he's no, not no, from right. that day and age of looking for them on the internet. This ain't little Mosey, my nigga. This is a grown-ass man, like, bro. <laughs> Josh, I'm Josh Smirks. <laughs> I'm Sprung came out 15 years ago. Great He's been digging out bitches Before for a long time. Still like, like, don't get me wrong. Has T-Pain probably slid in a random chick's DM? Possibly. But I'm going to say this. If she slid in his, I believe there's <laughs> no way. Like, this doesn't surprise me. Like, like we have, like, my dad's not young, young, but he's fairly young. Like, he doesn't know how to use shit. One of our friends' his parents are only, I'm not going to say how. They're like 40, it's like 42 to 45. They, I can tell this quick story. They go outside, they tell him he has his Amazon Prime on the TV. They're like, hey, we're going to we're gonna buy Amazon. We're going to buy Borat, blah, blah, blah. And they're, he's like, bro. That shit's free. And his dad's like, no, it's nine ninety five. And he's like, no, it's not. It's free. And he's like, I just watched Borat 2. It's free. What are you talking about? He went outside. These niggas ordered Borat 1. And they're arguing like, no, I didn't. And it's like, bro, it says 2006 right there. So that tells you, like, bro, they're not looking at their phone. T-Pain's in the studio, fucking bitches, getting money, being angry. He ain't got time for requests. You can't, you can't um, convince me that he should not know how to Instagram works. Well, and that's what I was going to say, too, because I'm like, my thing is, bro, my man, my man has freaking, he's what, he's in the industry. Mm-hmm. And it's not like, I'm like, any old person, I'm like, 100%, I believe that. Like, my dad. My dad, I would not expect that. Yeah, no, he's anything. not going to. But this man is in the industry. He's done all this. I'm like, bro, come on, dog. Like, it, in my mind, I'm like, you got to know. You, that you realize, like, and this is back to him being part of an old industry. It's a new thing now for celebrities to, like. Obviously, if you know somebody, you can call them and text them. Soulja Boy started this shit. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is it's a, it's a new age where, like, celebrities, as weird as it sounds, because this is, like, really big in music, too, are actually talking to each other. Like, like oh, we want to do a project together. We're going to talk to each other. That Like, T-Pain comes from an era where, like, you call my manager, and then you call this, and then you call that. Like, it's okay. like a lot of these people okay. don't talk directly to each other. So him being on Instagram, not knowing how to use that, makes sense to me, because he doesn't come from the air. Like, if one, like, like, if I get a request, I know it instantly. Because yeah. also, I'm not famous. So, like, I'm not thinking I'm getting requests. The DMs, he, yo, I know what I wish you would have saw? The DMs that he's open from the people that he's seen. Because that might also make him not want to be on his fucking phone. Because we don't know who's had access to T-Pain and make him go, like, I'm not even opening up these. <laughs> like, like, bro, if I, get, if I get, like, a bunch of fucking, if I get a bunch of DMs from the Catch Me Outside girl randomly one day, I'm like, you know what I'm not going to do? Stay on my phone. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just yeah. like, no, this is over, you know? But, yeah, yeah, but leading into that, we're going to talk about, you know, nothing nothing's, uh, gets the panties wetter than the NFL draft. And uh, we're going to... Got my panties wet. Low key, dead ass. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to let these guys take over this because I stand firm on this belief. The NFL draft is dog shit. It's a big production. And I love, I love the NFL. I love the NFL. But it's a big production. Well, we'll take over. It's yeah. a big production <laughs> to watch niggas who are only going to be in the league about four years sign wow. up to have brain injuries. And then, and then, no, and this is my thing. Everyone says it's exciting. The draft itself isn't exciting. The implications of the draft, because there's only 16 games compared to, like, baseball, it's 80. 17, one, no. Yeah, 17, excuse me. <laughs> pardon self, pardon self. And basketball being, like, 80, whatever. So, like, 
it's not it's it's more impact because clearly percentage wise, if you play in your first round draft pick or whatever, you're percentage wise playing in more impactful moments. But as far as the actual draft itself, bro, half the time we're watching a bunch of bullshit mock drafts that don't make sense. And it's it's just not as fun as NBA draft. The NBA draft I see seventeen trades. Like I've seen the fabric of the NBA be ripped from its core when Kawhi Linder got traded for George Hill. Two things that weren't supposed to actually make a difference in either conference. And you know what we saw last night? Fucking Travis Etienne go in the first round. <laughs> All right. Starting off to what Alonzo just said, the blasphemy that came out of his mouth. Yeah. The, the NFL Josh, draft. Josh, I told me that Kelly Oubre was better than uh, Will Barton. He is way. better than Will no, Barton. Stop looking at fantasy football or fantasy basketball. <laughs> get off ESPN. Oh, by the way, hey, can we get up for Tootie? Beat Josh in fantasy basketball this week. All right, hold on. First of all, we will, we will, we will, we will. Time out, time out. I'm, like, we're not I'm, there I'm yet. speaking we're not into there yet. fruition. Tootie, speaking Tootie's going to win. But the thing is, Giannis got hurt. Like, my best player. Like, that that hurts badly. Badly. We're not going to talk about this. Which would literally prove our argument about the whole Kelly Oubre having more points because this team sucks dick. But whatever. All right. Um, Talk about sucks dick. Did you make the playoffs? I didn't. I didn't. Uh, and okay. I should have. I, I should have. Uh, hey, we made, uh, hey, hey, good job. Hey, hey, I love, I'm not talking about Trav had a good I, team. I, so I, I, yeah, I had a great team. I think my shit fell apart. I yeah. got injuries. Yeah. I had Embiid, I won five Curry. straight, and I didn't draft my first three rounds. Hey, Padres always play good in September when they don't make the playoffs. Nobody gives a fuck. And uh, yet you come on here and make us talk about the Padres. And Josh, for the record, we remember. And we won when yesterday. You were a hey, fan. Padres are more relevant than the Falcons have ever been. That's a lie. You never made playoffs. Who the Padres? Bro, you've made playoffs two times like my whole yeah, fucking life. Did we make playoffs last year? Yeah. I, I don't know. I think we did. Oh, and what'd you go do? We better handle this. Sit season. your ass at home. And Josh, we remember when you were a Dodger fan. Look at me. Hey, everybody out there, Josh lies about his fucking teams. This nigga was a Titans fan. The only team he's ever held what down. What is Titans fan? This is the only team he's ever held down is the Lakers. He didn't like Bama until about fucking six minutes before Nick Saban called. Okay? <laughs> this, this nigga 100%. was a Tennessee Vols fan. Okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> No. Not true. None Judy, of that's true. Judy, thoughts. Thoughts on this. <laughs> There's some truth to these statements. I went to Alabama in 2013. That don't mean shit. Nick, I went to a Clippers game. I wasn't a Clippers fan. My aunt went to Alabama. That's that don't true. mean shit. I've been to Alabama. My mom fan. went to National University. Thank I was you. a Tennessee Winters fan. I was a Tennessee fan. Thank you. Like, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, the draft really threw me off. The draft. The draft. The draft is awesome. I, I love, love the draft. It. It's love better it. than most other sports entire I was, seasons. I was talking to somebody the other day. I was like, there's like two things that like absolutely like I get super hyped for. The NFL draft and like my fantasy football draft. Like those two yeah. things, I'm like, let's go. Like in months in preparation. Like I've I've been looking at what the Chargers were gonna do and what other teams were gonna do for like since the, once uh, once um, the national championship is done, I'm already looking mock drafts. Like I'm like, yo, what what what's what's happening right now? Who's who's going where? What am I getting? Who's supposed to fall where? Like, I love that shit. It's so good. Yeah, yeah definitely. But the NFL draft shits on the NBA draft. 100. percent 100. percent Not even close. Not, not even close. Alonzo thinks the NBA draft. Yeah, better. trust me. We, yeah, he said it in the car like before. Like before we we're talking about things we we're gonna talk about. Yeah, and he said that, and I was just like, craziness. Fuck no. I, I, fuck I, no. All right, answer this question. How many? Like, let's let's look at this. Like. Obviously, there's more players in the NFL draft, so we'll just go first rounds for both. You know what I mean? We'll go the NFL first round versus NBA lottery picks. Just think about this. Like, so, so think about this. What is – think about all the moves, how much more – no, get me wrong. If the NFL – if you take away the 37 fake mock drafts that we have to deal with, the actual event of the draft is way more exciting at the NBA because more things are more inclined to happen. We saw the 76ers – Draft a kid whose mom works in their front office, but that, and they traded that nigga what, away. That's one instance. That's but, oh, but what you're talking about, though, you're talking about you're, it's, for me. It's open ended because it's a year by year basis. You, just this last year, or whatever your example you're talking about, that's because that draft had that trade. What about all the other NFL drafts where people have moved up and you know made crazy things? Like San Francisco just moved up to the number. They moved up to the number three position. It's, uh, Chicago moved from number twenty to number eleven to get somebody. Like there's some, there's things always you happening. You call that open ended, but no, I'll say is this: I believe the NFL draft is a waiting game. Like you're waiting to see if these picks pan out. During the NBA draft, people get traded. Like good players get traded for draft picks and like vice versa, and it can have an impact immediately. Oh, trust me. Like like, a hunt, like the impact of the NBA draft is more immediate. The, but you're NFL. About it too, though. You're, you're talking about players wise, so you're dealing with five players, like five players. You know, that's you, what, you yeah. Be, yeah, you could be more impactful. But even then, though, I'm like, bro, like. I mean, if you bring like a good, I don't know, uh, receiver receiver in or something like that. If somebody were to make a trade and like make a like, dude, that fool can make an impact. I mean, as long as you have like decent quarterback, you know. But like, in general, in my mind, I just I think um, 
I don't know. NFL is probably more like and like the first round NFL players are all supposed to be impact players. Yeah. Like example, the, the the tackle from um from Tampa last year, he was in the starting line the whole year Tristan last Wirfs. year. Yeah. My, Leonard, you know, uh, Derwin James, like all these people, like Derwin James came onto the Chargers and led us in tackles and just boom, impact, bang. But, but that's like, but, the same but, line. But, that's, that's, like, but to your own point, that's you're talking about like one guy. Like like we saw. Shut, shut the, the fuck up. No, but shut bro, the fuck bro, up, we've dog, seen no. literally, bro. Yeah. Shut the bro, fuck think, up. No, bro, no, bro. Think about how the NBA the does draft. No. Okay, you, no, you know why the NBA draft is cooler also, in my personal opinion? It's because how trading, like, draft picks in general in the NBA is way more loose. Like, you know what I mean? Think about this. The Celtics, and I always tell people this. This tells you how, like, how different the NBA draft is. The Celtics were able to rip the fucking Brooklyn Nets off, get rid of Paul Pierce. Oh, hell AD, yeah. That was crazy. Get <laughs> hella picks. So, instead of the Celtics having to reload, you know, I think they missed the playoffs one time, like, after that whole era. They missed the playoffs one time, like, probably 15 years, they get Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. These are all big draft day things. And guess what? Who's still sitting there? The Nets. And, you know, in the football, you don't get that. Like, you don't get the, like, future. Like, you know why, like, the draft bothers me? Because, like, the draft picks don't va aren't valued as high in the NFL. Because, bro, Nuke was traded for a pack what? of cigarettes wait, in a wait, fourth wait, round yeah. pick. We can't let you say that. We can't let you say that. Bro, that's a lot of bullshit. NFL draft picks are way more valuable than NBA 100%. draft picks. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I'm going to let you know, and I heard this phrase, and I'm going to keep saying it. You know what gets you fired in the NFL? Talent and youth. Because you're waiting on talent, and then you're banking on youth. And you can't do that. The NBA, you can do that. You can get one young new guy, and he can change the whole fabric. Like, and Well, no, that's because it's NBA. Just like he said, there's only but five that's why players the, on the that's fucking why court. the draft is more important, because it's a less of a pool. Like, like no, I feel like the NBA drafts no. more. No, no. The NFL no. would be more, bro, because in my personal opinion, it's like, bro, you have to have a whole solid team. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, you it, have it, to build that, your team up. You can't be like. I, yeah, no, that's not a decision. That's not a decision. It's more of a team sport. Yeah, no, it's more of a team sport in that sense. I'm just saying the immediate impact impact the way like the fans receive things like you like the NBA it's rare outside of quarterbacks that the interaction during the draft for the NFL players is nearly as much as it is for the NBA in the sense of, like this like bro Porzingis got booed like you know remember this like granted we booed 90 percent of New York's draft picks for the most part but like we've seen other players get like in the NBA get booed Darko Milicic got booed by the Pistons yeah like outside of quarterbacks we don't really hold like this sounds stupid because this is Obviously impossible. But you know, like in the smaller leagues, they draft quarterbacks separately. Like they have like a quarterback draft and they have the whole thing. If you take the quarterback aspect out the draft, it's really not as fun. Like think of the years when quarterbacks aren't as good. I'm still the have draft to is like, it's not as like entertaining. Like this draft, there's five quarterbacks that could possibly go. And that adds to it. I'm not saying like if we took five power forwards out, it wouldn't do the same thing. But it's like once you get past the Justin Fields trade, what like what is it? We're just waiting for then Mac you're, Jones. Then you're a casual fan if that's the case. Then no, I'm a oh, no, of the, the case, NFL, you're a casual no, of the fan. NFL draft. Yes, of the NFL. I don't no 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 not at all. But that's okay. But that's to my point then because for me I get hyped for all these teams right. Like yeah. you know I'm sitting here at Cincinnati number five pick. I'm over here. What are we going? What are we going to do? Jamar Chase or Swell? Like, what are we doing? And that and that affects me. And that affects because you know I'm 13 pick over here, Chargers. So you know, so that affects me. Of what am I going to get? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, course, it's yeah. all interchanging, I and a, I absolutely love it. I have a question because Josh is Josh has been a fan. R22 has been a fan of what is perceived as has been lackluster, but has had highs in the Chargers. And you're a you're you're a baby to this. Like you're still only about four years in. I have a question because I'm a Falcons fan, and we've done disappointing things. Do you believe, Trav, that you wouldn't feel as hyped if you lived through all of the fucked up Charger drafts? Well, as much as you don't give me credit for it, I, I mean, I was still a fucking fan. I lived in San Diego. I just, you were casual. I, I, I just, exactly. I was just a casual Charger. I always wanted them to win. I always wanted them to succeed. It's just I never, like, hey. <laughs> 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 Another fucking legend. Another legend. But I'll finish on the point real quick. Is that I, was, I, I, I still went through all of it. Like, I saw the struggles. I saw I saw all of it. It's just that I just didn't ever, like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm the, I'm a Chargers diehard. Like, you know, it was just like, all right, eventually my time came, and I'm just like, yes, I'm, I'm officially there. Yeah, I don't, but hold, yeah, that, I don't I would, hold that against exactly. you. Exactly. So I was there for the, all of it. So, yes. And, 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 and number one, Being I've been excited about feeling it are two different and things. And I've, I've been excited about the draft since I got into football. Every single year I watch the draft and make sure I have time to watch the draft. I don't give a fuck if it's just the quarterbacks you know when julio's going top five you know it's just like fuck yeah like this is my shit like this is what i do okay, let me let me bring up a great great point about the nfl draft compared to the nba draft mm -hmm. we're hyped about kyle pitts right 
in no fucking way are we Falcons fans. That's why it's such a great thing. Like I'm hyped about Trevor exactly, Lawrence. Exactly, right? Like like but, I, I, I could care less about the Jaguars. Could, but you could say that for the same reasons why like that's that, I don't think that's tangible because you can do the same thing for basketball. I was hyped for Michael Porter to go to Denver. But okay, but, I'm not a Nuggets fan. But, but in the NBA a lot of times you don't even know who these guys are. Like Denny Avdija yeah. would just or whatever his name was. Oh, the about, that's not a valid point because in football we don't know who they are and niggas literally wear a helmet. It's literally called the sport where niggas have identity issues no, no, because no. we don't know who I, they are. No, you can watch college basketball or college football. You can't watch European basketball. That's right. You don't know who some of these guys okay, are. Okay, you say that, but here's the thing. That's, that's also, but that's also yeah. false. That's a misnomer too because House of Highlights puts all these niggas highlights. They're, like I House just, of Highlights, <laughs> NBC. Which one are you watching seen, more? <laughs> I, I have seen Michael Porter cross niggas since he was 13 years old but on YouTube. he doesn't YouTube. play the EuroLeague. Yeah. That's you, my point. Okay, but here's the thing. What's the percentage of guys coming from Europe? Like a lot. Like you get four yeah, out of a lot of guys. Okay, but think about how many dudes go in the first round that we don't know who the fuck they are. All the I know time. everyone that goes into the first round. You know everyone who in the first uh, round. If if we brought up a list and brought okay. and brought up the players and stuff like that, yeah, I'm gonna know what they are and like what, what, uh, who, who they were. We're gonna do this. You're talking about the NFL draft. Right? Yeah, I, I thought you were talking about NBA. Yeah, no, I know, NBA, I know who I don't all know. these guys but are. Like yeah, like all these people that went off the board in the first round. Like I know something about them. Like he's yeah. just like, he's gonna ask you what college they went to and all this what position they. Play. I mean, who's gonna ask? Well, I mean, what else is there to ask? I, I mean, mean, I have to see it on a sheet, but I mean, that's just... you. Don't, you don't know who the twenty through thirty guys are in the NBA for most most part. I do know the guys in the NFL. I usually know the twenty through thirty because I'm usually pretty good at knowing rosters in the NBA. Like I'm a back end roster guy. But like, most of those mean, guys don't make an impact in the NFL. Those guys are immediate impact players. Yeah, I mean, because you're gonna argue if they made the an NFL roster, they have to be good enough to make the NFL roster. We know for to be honest, we know the back end of basketball rosters a lot. Like of someone friends with niggas, so they got jobs. Like someone I had to do research like, was that Baltimore, the, the receiver who went to. Baltimore. I guess he went to Minnesota. He was like a playmaker or something like that. But like after they draft him, I'm like, okay, like yeah, let me. Know you know who Zayvon Collins was? Uh, is that? A, it sounds like a. It sounds like an offense. The nigga from Tulsa. Tulsa. He's a linebacker, right? Yeah. The linebacker. yeah. yeah. Okay. I give you. I also gave you. Seven you did. Things you did. You did. You did. You did. I need it. I mean, I need it. But at, once I get it, as that's just how my mind works. But like, yeah, like once I you, get it, I'm you like, know oh, who yeah. Christian Durasol was. What? Uh, just what position? Offensive lineman. Um. What's what? What um? What's cool? Do you yeah, want his height, cool. weight, and stats now? No, that's one. That's one. That's one. That's one. What's cool? Virginia what, Tech. Yes, because okay, so there you go. Because I know that the Chargers that like, he was third on our board and he was third on offensive tackles. You know who Gregory Rocio was? Again, I just need to know. Just tell Miami. me what. Just tell me what position. I'm not talking to you, nigga. <laughs> conversation. All I need to know is I'll tell you something. No, I'm gonna about tell you him. what you told me earlier. Me and Travis are having a conversation. Right. Right. So, so is that the is that the defensive end? Is that the defensive end from Miami? Yeah, and then he played JUCO and he actually went D1 JUCO and then and then went to the pro. So yeah, and then he's okay. I, have a no, question. I just need do to be know, warned or, up do, a little do, bit. Do, and I'm gonna do, tell you some no, fucking facts. Oh no, better question. Better question. Better question. Question. Better question. Exactly. Did you know this before ESPN ran that four-minute special yeah. on him before that? Dude, I'm telling you, I look at it, I just have to see it in front of me. As long as I see it in front of me, I'm going to know it. I'm going to know well, something no, about it. That's called reading. Okay, well, I need <laughs> like, to do it. I mean, I got to do a little bit of research. Like, can I do a little bit of research? Like, I mean, That's, you're arguing two different things between research and reading. Like, okay, to your point, uh, yes. Uh, do I know? Like, do I fucking suck them off and know their height, weight, and exactly what they're? Nigga, fucking we doing? knew who Bo Bo no. was. My point. He went last in the draft. We knew who Bo was. We knew who Isaiah nigga, Thomas was last in the draft. We know who these niggas are in the who are second round picks in the NBA draft. But not at the time, to... though. Yes, we did. You didn't know who Isaiah Thomas was. No, coming out? I did not. You did not know who Bo Bo was. No, I mean, I knew him because he went to the draft. You didn't know who Bobo was. No, I knew that he went to fucking Oregon and he's a tall motherfucker. That's all you know about these niggas. It's the and same that's all thing. I need. That's exactly what the fuck I'm but saying. But that's my point. You don't know shit. I do know shit. That's once we do a little bit of research. That's our hey, and that's episode twenty five of the Young of the Wash. I am the Dusty Dynamo Dunzo, the sweatband Susio himself. With me as always. It's your favorite light skin. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just here, so I'll do my own intro, my own outro. Josh Pele with Travis and Zoe, two of my best friends. I love you guys. All right.